Hey, what's up guys, Mikey here. After a recent encounter I had, the fear of becoming homeless really sat in with me. While I am thankful I live in a home, I do feel sorry for those who don't have a home, because they could not have a home for one reason or another. Going bankrupt, destroyed by some maniac, or being sucked away by some kind of insect. And frankly, I don't even know which one sounds the worst. Home Sweet Pineapple is the episode where nematodes drink away Spongebob's pineapple, leaving Spongebob in need of a new home. Like pizza delivery, this episode aired on August 14, 1999, and is that episode where people say, oh yeah, the dang nematodes. In addition to the nematodes, this episode also introduces Spongebob's mom and dad, Margaret and Harold Squarepants respectively. While they are a minor part of the show, I've still seen people talk about those characters from time to time, which does prove that Spongebob's parents are, at the very least, a decent part of the series as little as they're seen. While I have seen a lot of positive opinions about the episode, there are also a few people that were talking about a few things that were kind of holding this episode back a little bit. Most people have said that it's some scenes dragging on and on like Spongebob and Patrick sleeping under Patrick's rock, as well as how mean Squidward was to Spongebob in the episode. While those are fair reasons, there are a lot of things to like about it. Based on all this information I've shared about the general fan reception, let's watch this episode and see how it truly fares. So the episode starts up and we see a bunch of nematodes strolling through the Bikini Bottom countryside. They declare they're hungry, so they eat a big piece of coral and then they eat Fred's boat and Fred is pissed about the nematodes eating his boat. Seriously, who could blame him? I hate insects. They're so stupid. The nematodes decide they're thirsty, so they go to Spongebob's house and start sucking it through straws, causing the house and various things inside it to start shrinking until they disappear out of existence. Spongebob wakes up and thinks he and Gary are huge, but then he realizes that the house is shrinking. Spongebob goes to the living room and tries to call Squidward, but as he's talking, the phone shrinks until it's gone. Patrick wakes up to ruin Squid's day and heads over to Spongebob's house. The nematodes finish drinking the pineapple till nothing's left, leaving Spongebob and Gary homeless and sad. See? Insects are a nuisance to society. Spongebob sees that the only thing left was a small pebble. Patrick and Squidward come over and Spongebob tells them that his house was gone and he starts to wonder where he'll live. When Squidward realizes this, he says goodbye to Spongebob and goes inside his house to celebrate. Even if Spongebob had to move away, Patrick would still be living next to Squidward, and Squidward's not very fond of Patrick either, so it's still not all perfect. Spongebob thinks that he'll have to move back in with his parents, but Patrick gets the idea of building him a new house, stating that he built his house all by himself. Spongebob likes this idea, so they set to work. Next, we see a montage filled with things like Patrick hammering his own thumb, the environment turning when Spongebob turns a screw, and Spongebob hammering floorboards in mid-air. After the montage is over, a house is finished, but it was only a scale model, and Spongebob couldn't fit in it, so he felt that he and Gary had to move back in with his parents. Patrick says that he never went back to his parents' house after he got kicked out. Patrick's parents kicked him out? What is Patrick hiding? Patrick suggests Spongebob and Gary stay with him, and Spongebob is immediately on board. Later that night, Spongebob is all settled in, and he, Patrick, and Gary go to bed. But when Spongebob tries to go to sleep, he and Gary discover how loud of a snorer Patrick is. Spongebob tries putting corks in his ears to block the noise. Then Patrick starts to drool, and the wind blows, so Patrick grabs a rock to pull it closer to himself. Spongebob starts to feel cold and pulls the rock back to him, and soon they struggle with it until Patrick grabs it for himself, leaving Spongebob cold. Why doesn't he just try to scoot back under the rock without pulling it back towards him? Spongebob puts sand over himself to try to go back to sleep. Patrick's gross drool heads over to Spongebob, and he absorbs it, so he walks over to Patrick, empties out the drool, and turns the two small corks into a big cork, and shoves it in Patrick's mouth to keep it shut. He tries to go back to sleep, but Patrick starts to struggle and spits out the cork because he was dreaming about spiders attacking him and starts hitting Spongebob with the rock. After this, Spongebob tries to move away from the rock to go back to sleep, but Patrick hits him with the rock again. Spongebob gives up trying to sleep outside with Patrick and goes inside Squidward's house instead. Spongebob asks Squidward if they can stay there, and Squidward, who was still half asleep, agreed, let Spongebob sleep in the bed, and got a glass of water for him. Then they said goodnight, and Squidward realized that Spongebob was in there, and kicked him and Gary out of the house. 
Next morning, Squidward woke up and got dressed quickly. I wish I could be awake, out of bed, and dressed that quickly. Even if it's a day I was looking forward to, I can only roll out of bed every single morning. Squidward comes outside to see Spongebob leave Bikini Bottom to move back in with his parents. Just then, his parents arrive and Patrick starts to cry hysterically. Squidward selfishly puts Spongebob's bags in the car and Spongebob goes back to where his house used to be and buries the pebble and starts to cry over the memories it holds. A tear lands where the pebble was planted and it starts to react. Spongebob says goodbye to Squidward and Squidward starts to sing and dance in happiness. Before they can leave, Patrick holds up the bow with his wild bawling. As Squidward was singing and dancing, the pebble turned out to be a seed and it reacted stronger than ever. It caused an earthquake followed by growing a giant vine and a new pineapple house grows out of it, dropping right where his old house used to be, on top of Squidward. Spongebob Patrick and Spongebob's parents are happy that the pineapple house and everything in it was back. Spongebob runs over to Squidward, who was under the floor, and told him that he was back forever, which Squidward was upset about, and the episode ends. So that was Home Sweet Pineapple, and based on everything that happened here, is this episode really as bad as those few people made it out to be? No. Oh. This episode is pretty neat. There are a lot of cool jokes. I always loved the parts where the nematodes ate Fred's boat, and he said, Aw, oh, dang nematodes! and where Patrick would scream, SPIDERS! and seeing how wacky Spongebob looks whenever he gets hit with the rock. Surprise, surprise, those lines became popular on the internet. It's time to move on from that. That house building montage was pretty funny too, especially the parts where Patrick's thumb got hit, whether it was by his own hammer or the floorboards falling from midair. Also on the topic, my favorite part of the montage was Spongebob hammering the floorboards randomly in midair. Of course, I understand everybody has a right to their own opinion, and if people don't like this episode, or any other episode for that matter, that's their opinion. I get that. Just like everybody else, I'm simply stating my own opinion. And speaking of opinions, it's time to talk about the lower points of the episode. Starting off, Squidward being mean to Spongebob. Of course, Squidward not liking Spongebob is part of his character, but some people have said that this was a little worse than usual since Squidward showed no sympathy at all when Spongebob lost his house and only cared about the thought of Spongebob moving away. Also, Squidward left Spongebob and Gary without a place to sleep after he kicked them out of the house. At least he didn't hit Spongebob with something heavy like Patrick did in his sleep. Additionally, he quickly loads Spongebob's suitcases into his parents' car when they arrive and sings and dances a lot when Spongebob was about to leave. Of course, he gets his comeuppance when the new pineapple falls on him, all is well. Moving on, there are the scenes that drag on and on. Personally, I think that the part where Spongebob is trying to sleep but Patrick is being too loud and rough is the only part that drags on for too long. I know that it's supposed to emphasize the main conflict of Spongebob needing to find a new home, but some parts of this scene are a little longer than necessary. In my opinion, the longest parts of this scene are when Patrick is drooling and him and Spongebob struggling with the rock. Maybe those two parts could have been a little shortened and instead we could see Patrick talking in his sleep, making it even harder for Spongebob to fall asleep. Or maybe we could even see more of Gary having trouble to sleep. After the struggle with the rock, Gary wasn't shown until Spongebob and Gary tried to sleep inside Squidward's house. Where did he go? Clearly, he wasn't hurt by Patrick hitting Spongebob with the rock, nor was his shell broken, so that's good. Even these long, dragged out scenes don't ruin the episode in my opinion. I do agree that it drags on, but that doesn't automatically make the whole episode bad. Speaking of Patrick's rock, at the beginning we see a hole with a little den that Patrick falls into, but later that huge hole is gone. Obviously, the interior of Patrick's house is never set in stone and varies from episode to episode, but this is within the same episode, so the inconsistency here is a bit odd. Moving on, this next part is just something that I personally always thought of. When I was a kid, the sea going crazy felt a little strange to me. I can't explain why, but 7 year old me thought the sea during this part looked like some kind of giant creepy eyeball. As I got older, I wasn't weirded out by it anymore. But as previously stated, I thought that when I was young. I was a weird kid. Random weird thoughts entered my brain way more than necessary. But I'm older now and it doesn't happen anymore. Yep, no more. I also have to say, I always wonder where Spongebob's parents live. Spongebob's dad said that mom had dinner waiting, so I wonder how long it would take to get to wherever they came from. But that's just a curiosity, not a random thought that made me feel weird or a criticism by any stretch of the imagination. 
Also, fun fact, when Spongebob's voice speeds up when the phone shrinks, the sped up dialogue is, and the walls are closing in on me, Squidward, Gary is terrified too. Watch the episode online and slow it down and you'll see for yourself. But moving on from all of that, I feel that this episode isn't bad by any means. If anything, people just say that its sister episode, episode 10, Pizza Delivery, is much better. While I agree the previous episode stands out more, I hate how fans always say things like, Oh, this episode isn't as good because it's forgettable compared to this episode. I'll go over this more in depth in the future, but for the time being, I feel this episode is good despite its weak points. Even if its sister episode is better, this episode is nice, which is definitely important. Palm Sweet Pineapple is a pretty decent episode to say the very least. There may be some mean spirited scenes from Squidward and some scenes that dragged on for a bit too long, but that's not enough to make this the worst episode. Not at all. It's still a good one. Although I do have to say, despite the nematodes here, I hate insects even more than I already did, and that probably won't ever change.